Hi, this is Charles with another um, quick review and introduction to the game of Blue Max. I've played the game a couple times now and I wanted to kind of go into more detail. Um, here are the cards that you get with the game. You get German cards and Allies cards. You can take a look at the stats in the cards. And uh, you can see that the fuselage rating here is 23 for this one. 18 for the Red Baron. Stability rating is how good the plane is. So B is average. C is below average. Um, engine is 8. You can take 8 damage. You can take 30 damage on the wings. This particular plane has two machine guns in the front and one in the rear for the observer. You can take 5 damage in the tail. Your maximum altitude is 4. If you're using fuel rules, you get 65 fuel tokens. As opposed to the uh, Red Baron, he gets 37. And you take a look through these and you decide which plane that you want to keep. And for our example here, we have chosen uh, plane number 8. And uh, next, what we'll do is we'll transfer this information over to this damage card. Now you'll notice on the fuselage rating, I've marked out everything above 23, so as I take damage on the plane, I'll just put X's through here. Once it's all blacked out, that part of the plane is destroyed and is no longer flyable. Uh, same thing for the engine, the wings, the tail. You'll notice on the damage cards, when you do take damage on the tail or something like that, there's an icon here that matches that section of the plane to help keep track of uh, for where the damage is. We'll go back to damage in a bit. So after you've transferred all this, your plane number, your stability rating, your machine guns, your maximum altitude, which I did not fill in, you'll get your little plane icon. Now your plane icon shows you the different types of damage you will take as you are being attacked from different directions. If you are attacked from this direction, you'll take an A damage, which is an A damage card. Now these damage cards are typically for the engine or the front area of the plane, possibly the wings and things like that. And you'll notice that there's a blue section and a red section. So you're going to roll a die, and when you roll that die, you can either hit blue, which will give you the blue damage. This is a broken wing prevents you from doing aerobatic maneuvers, I believe. Or if you rolled a red, this would be uh, five, five damage to your wing. And you just mark that on your sheet, five damage, and check off five boxes here. Okay, so that's all the information you need. You'll need this card, you'll need your plane, and you'll need your plane card, and then you'll need some uh, tokens. If you're going to do altitude, uh, you'll take your go up and go down altitude markers. Climb, dive, st stay the same level. And then you'll need your actual altitude level uh, marker. So this will go on the plane. On the very first turn of the game, you decide where your secret uh, deployment area will be all on your side of the board. So you just basically take a look at the numbers and decide which one on your side that you want to deploy on. You um, write that down, and then you write down your starting maneuver. So each plane has a starting maneuver card. I'm sorry, this is your maneuver card for this plane. So you notice it says the name of the plane on the top right. And these are the maneuvers that this plane can do. So each time you're, it's your turn, you'll select one of these moves. But the one right here that has the upside down triangle is always the first move that you have to do. So you'll notice on this chart here, I've got uh, my first maneuver, which is zero, three S3. So then everybody, um, after they're done plotting their, their lo first location of the board, they raise their player aid that shields their... Uh, from the other player's view, you lift it up and everybody exposes where they're going to move. So then you move your plane, you basically place your plane with a starting marker on the board, on 
on the um, hex that you decided that you want to play on with your plane, and then you perform that maneuver. 3S3. So we're going to go following the chart. Two sp spaces straight forward. And then also I forgot the altitude marker. Okay. So there's nobody within range. There's no combat or anything like that. You go through the sequence of play, which is also on the player A card, which is nice. And we go through the uh, sequence, which is on the, everybody's card here. So the first thing we'll do is check for tailing. And tailing happens if um, somebody is in your front arc here. You're able to see them, and you're also in their tail arc on this side, straight out. So uh, if both those things are met, the um, opposing player, the person that you're tailing, has to reveal to the player who is tailing them which direction they're going to go by using these cards. So they'll secretly pick uh, whether they're going left, right, or straight and take one of these cards and hand it to that player and that player looks at that so they know uh, which way they're going the next turn. Okay, so there's no tailing right now. Uh, we did planning, we did movement, uh, fuel depletion. If, they're, um, if you're using fuel depletion rules, you basically look at the the speed that you were going. So 3S3, this last digit, is how many fuel tokens you would use or the speed that you were going. Uh, the 3 is the maneuver code, essentially. And the S means you're going straight. You notice everything on here is uh, L, so those are all left turns, and all these are all right turns. There's also special icons on here. There's fire. If you have a fire on board, you can try to put it out by performing one of these maneuver, rolling a dice and doing a check to see if the fire went out. Uh, if you have smoke, um, smoke can turn into flame on a die roll. Um, also, you'll notice that some of these have the black borders. These black border maneuvers are straights, and they are required to do before you do any type of maneuver, a special aerobatic maneuver. Um, and these are highlighted in red. Here and here. You'll see some with icons like this. Anything with an exclamation point as a uh, non-repeatable maneuver, so you cannot do two of these in a row. So if you need to do a nice tight left turn here, or a straight one, um, you have to, um, you can only do it once and then you have to do something else that does not have an uh, icon like that on there. And uh, then there's gliders, which basically save you fuel, and it will cost you no fuel to glide, to do this glide option here. So this is a glide option, this is a glide option, this is a glide option. So if you're using the fuel optional rules, those are uh, very important to use early in the game so you can maintain your fuel, um, especially if you have a plane with lower fuel. Okay, so combat. Basically, uh, your combat is... I did want to show you how many planes come with the game. There was some confusion on the Geek of how many planes that you get, and somebody said six, but it's a six-player game, but here's all the, the planes that you get. So it's, it's quite a few. All right, so combat is um, one, two, three spaces away is one die. It's two dice here and three dice here. Then you'll go through this little chart to check different things. So you'll choose your target, and you get uh, the dice that I said, and then you can declare a burst type. So if you want to do a medium, you get a, a medium burst, you get a plus one die. If you do a long burst, you get plus two die, but you run the risk of jamming a machine gun, and you have to do a check for that after you're uh, in a certain section that's coming up. You check, and if it's um, you've shot at that plane previously, it's a plus one. If the target plane is in a stall, it's a plus one die. Uh, if the target plane is at a lower altitude than you, it's a plus one. And minus one if you're at a speed three or four. Also minus one if you have a single machine gun. So in this situation, we've got three. 
He was not the target for the previous turn. Uh, the plane is not stalled. The plane is not at a lower altitude. He's the same um, stability rating as me. Uh, we have two machine guns, so we're good there. So basically, we're rolling three dice if we do a short burst. A medium burst would be four die. So we would declare that, and we would roll four dice. So we did one red damage and two blue. Now our opponent is taking damage from the D side, which is pretty bad because the D is the tail, and that's typically the weakest. So just decide what card you're going to draw for what. So we'll do the red one first, and we look down here, and we're going to take four damage on the opponent's plane on the tail section. So you notice the red part of the card applies towards the red damage. He'll write that down in secret. And then we're going to do blue damage. So blue on the tail. So he has two on the wing and one on the tail. And he'll note that down on his sheet. And that is pretty much combat in a nutshell. Going back to the sequence of, sequence of play, we apply the damage now because damage is simultaneous. We try to unjam uh, machine guns and we check for uh, to see if a spinning plane, so if a, a plane that performed a maneuver that was illegal, it can go to a spin. Uh, different types of things can cause the plane to go into a spin. And you roll a die and you check to see, I think uh, you stop spinning on a five or a six possibly. Um, so if you're spinning, basically you're going to lose an al altitude and your direction will change randomly. So this will come in handy. We rolled a two and then our plane would be facing this way if we were spinning. So the only purpose for having this little starter marker is to help you keep your orientation. And if you're doing a maneuver, once you get on the other side of the board or going left to right, it gets a little tougher to, to figure out which direction you're supposed to go from the maneuver chart that you use. And this is a good way to mark your sheet to help you do those complex moves. Uh, it's not too complex, but it's, it's enough to, to help there. Here's the different type of damage you can take from the, um, uh, the damage cards. You notice there's different colors, so like uh, a red pilot with the, uh, the scarf on. If he's killed, he's eliminated from the game. Uh, if it's blue, he's injured, and his next maneuver must be a straight. Um, so the colors do matter. Going back to... Uh, our sequence of play here. We determine uh, apply special effects. We did not do a um, long burst so we don't have to check to see if there's a, a gun damage there. And uh, then we go on to the next turn. So everybody puts their player aids back up. They will choose a maneuver to do from this chart. And uh, since we did a 3S3 uh, a straight maneuver. We can actually do one of these acrobatic maneuvers if we wanted to. So we write down that in the next slot here. If we're playing altitude rules, we'll secretly declare by placing one of these icons, which is a dive, level, and climb. We're going to go ahead and uh, dive this turn. So we'll lay this upside down. Then the way we mark it in our games is everybody lays their player aid on, on their top of their movement chart so nobody can see. And then when everybody's ready, we just all pick up the player aid and we perform our next movement. It's been a very fun game. It's been fun experimenting with the uh, observer rules. Have not played with the fuel depletion yet, but I played it with the old game and it seems very similar. Um, I like the damage decks and. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, plays up to six players. We played it with four last night, and it played great. And uh, I guess that's about it. Hope you have a good day. Take care.